This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital Management, February 29th, 2012, with a quick case study on uh, the Ready Fire Aim technique using symbol ZSL. That's the ETF that is double inverse of silver, uh, so uh, of symbol SLV. So it's a double inverse of that. Uh, note on the charting. Uh, framework here. We've got the blue region in the center is the 30 period Bollinger Band uh, with plus or minus one standard deviation marked off using three minute charts. We're looking at half a day's worth of data. Uh, the solid black line is is a 30 period regression line. Uh, the solid blue line is a 10 period regression line. The red line in the middle is just the Bollinger Band mean, so that's an unweighted 30 period moving average. Uh, the purple line is off the chart here. That would uh, that would be the volume weighted average price. We were f far above uh, that price, so it doesn't even show. Uh, on the bottom, we have a MACD histogram that's using um, 10, 20, and 8 as the signal line. Uh, vertical blue line is the moment when we are stalking it. We stalking it because uh, it had made a crossover. The blue line across the black line slightly off the chart and then the 30 period regression line was hooking up along with the 10 period regression line. They crossed the uh, Bollinger Band mean here at the same time price which is this light gray line. Uh, we've turned off the candlesticks in order to hide uh, the noise of candlestick prices, so it's easier to see the signals. Uh, but when price emerged from the Bollinger Band region, uh, right about the same time the 10 and the 30 period regression lines were crossing the mean, uh, we got our entry and we were taking a, uh, a long entry on ZSL, which is essentially short, being short silver. Our entry is at the green line here uh, at approximately 9 25, $9.25 and we're going to use an initial stop of 25 cents at, that would be at $9 even. This line here uh, is at the kind of bottom of price that's about that's only about uh, 12 cents so the actual stop was at, at $9 but you can't see it on, on this chart so this distance here represents a 12 cent initial stop so our stop is actually twice that size. Um, Silver, silver had been getting hammered today, and so I wanted to have a position that would take advantage of any uh, afternoon moves of weakness in silver, which would uh, be a long trade in this inverse. Uh, so I was prepared to keep that stop in place and then see what I could get later in the afternoon. So we had price moved on up to nine dollars and just about forty cents. Came back to the Bollinger Band mean, chops around as it is. Uh, as it normal, normally will do. Price then continued to uh, get up to $9.50 uh, about 20 minutes before the close. Uh, I elected to take an exit here at $9.45 after that five cent pullback from the high of the day. Uh, and so the uh, the actual trade uh, was entry at nine and a quarter, exit at 9.45 on a 25 cent initial risk that works out to a 0.8 R trade indicated by this uh, solid green arrow. That's what the trade essentially looks like. Uh, just highlighted a couple other areas um, of interest. Uh, if I had been more tactically oriented, um, price got as high as 943 here and then started pulling back across the 10 period regression, then the 30 period regression back into the Bollinger Band here so we would get an actual much better uh, return on time uh, by taking this potential exit here. Uh, when when the blue crosses the black at an extreme, in other words outside the Bollinger Band, uh, our target is back to the mean. Uh, when it chops around and finds support we get very interested in uh, buying on dips because this is something that had been going up all day. So a pull back to the mean, find support and start to take off again gives us the potential for an additional entry or a re-entry if we had gotten out at this in this region. Um, you can see the 10 period crosses the 
uh, 30 period here outside the Bollinger Band. That's a signal to get long. You could get long again here at about 927. Uh, and then you have a second leg up um, all the way up to 950 in the matter of about uh, 40 minutes. And that really is a second trade here that's about 0.8R. Uh, if you don't want to take the crossover outside of the Bollinger Band, this uh, main reversion, you can wait for price to leave the Bollinger Band. Uh, that would have given you an entry about 9.33, uh, a 17 or 18 cent move immediately after that, um, which is a late afternoon trade. Uh, so there are multiple places in here where we can be more aggressive depending on how tactical uh, we want to be. So that's the, the use of the regression line crossover in combination here with the Bollinger Bands. And um, uh, the final thing I would observe is the entry that's indicated here when price leaves the Bollinger Band area corresponds pretty closely to the MACD histogram crossover when the, uh, line, the uh, uh, line crosses over to signal line. Uh, and then you, get a, you could get one exit right in this area, which is where the regression line crosses again. So those tend to be fairly closely uh, connected so far. You'll see another crossover in MACD histogram here at... at 245 Central, same place that the regression line cross over here. Um, you don't see this, there's not a corresponding here when price leaves the Bollinger Band, it's just the, the jaws of MACD are continuing to open up. The exit that I that I take here is in vicinity this crossover, um, and then that corresponds to where the jaws of MACD cross over again. So if you don't have a regression line channel uh, or a regression line feature on your charting package, uh, you may be willing to just work with the uh, MACD histogram. And so this is a three minute chart. I'm using 10, 20, and 8. Uh, and that will give you a fairly good um, entry and exit signals as well. So that's, that's all for this trading lesson. Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your risk managed and your powder dry.